Um, the last minute of this uh, video is probably pretty worthwhile for you to watch. Uh, I'm not suggesting you got to sit through the whole of this video. Um, if you if you if you lose interest or whatever, just jump to the last um, minute because there's some stuff there that's very 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 useful information. Okay. There's a lot of mysteries with um, with electric vehicles in general, but with BYD in particular. Um, the mysteries surround the, how the battery is managed. Um, there's inconsistencies as to the um, uh, range uh, at various stages. So um, I decided that I'd get a uh, sorry an OBD2 um, uh, data monitor, um, and I thought I'd share with just my own interest, and I thought I'd share with you. Um, what it is and, and, and how it worked. So <clears throat> on every um, vehicle um, there's a port that mechanics plug into to get diagnostics from their um, from the car. Um, the, it's, a, it's called an onboard diagnostic um, adapter and um, for a number of years now that they've been available in all cars um, it's mainly for the monitoring of its um, pollution um, uh, activities, whatever, um, you know, around the petrol side of things. And it really wasn't designed for um, e electric batteries. However, it has been used and it is now being used by a number of, um, of uh, manufacturers to, um, to monitor their batteries and for their um, uh, service people to see what's going on within the car. There's a lot of other um, interesting um, information that's available as well. So <clears throat> I'll get a little technical and if you wanted to skip this part then you can but and we'll move on and move on to the to actually using it. Uh, it can be plugged into the Edo 3 and you two can do exactly what I'm about to do. So <clears throat> There's two specifications. There's a CAN specification, which is around how the information is transferred from the vehicle to the to the um, to, to the device to the monitoring um, uh, system. So this is around what how the packets packets are, are formulated and and um, um, and the handshaking, if you know what that means, but the handshaking between the two, and that's pretty well cast iron. Um, then there's a secondary um, part to it, which is the actual um, OBD2 um, definitions. And that's around what information is available and the format of that information. Now, <clears throat> for the, for the um, uh, petrol side of things, it's pretty well documented and all manufacturers use exactly that. Um, for the elect electric battery, um, there's nothing formal. So each each um, company, each manufacturer, has their own code. Um, so that there, there lies the problem. So <clears throat> each car has a port. Well, let's just have a look at it first. So here it is. It came from Amazon yesterday, and I think it was like $30. How do you open it? It's got instructions. Wow, those are the instructions. It's got a quick guide and a user's and a, and a guide to plug it in. It's very easy to use. I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna put, wow, that's easy. So this is the actual device, and as you see there, there's pins, and these pin and, and this device plugs into a port, and the port is in the car. Now I looked everywhere, and, and, and every car's got it. And I looked everywhere for the port in the uh, BYD, and I couldn't find it. It's, it's supposed to be in a fairly convenient location around the driver's seat. So in the end I went down to car care, and I said to them, where's the OBD port? And they said, I will show you, but it's not of no use to you. And I said, why is that? And they said, well, BYD um, ha have, their own, uh, have their own system. And, um, you know, even ours wouldn't work. We had to get a special device sent out from China. Well, that seems odd because it's, you know, it's, there is a criteria around how it all, 
uh, around the specifications, there is some some um, uh, users have find or, or, or manufacturers have find uh, information around the um, around the data. So I really couldn't couldn't see it. But anyway, so I asked him where it was, and he showed me. I'll share with you in a sec. It's really easy to find. And what you do is you plug it in, and then you download an app, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. And the app plugs into the, uh, the uh, into the device, or when I say plugs, it communicates with the device, and you start seeing all this amazing sort of information. Um, so the problem is, we need to have an app that can read BYD data. So uh, yes, I found one. So. Um, Let's go out to the car and I'll show you how to install it. Firstly, we need to plug it in. Um, and then once it's plugged in, then we need to download an app. And then we need to, to do it. So we'll go do that. So the plug is um, under here. It's just there. If you, you can't see it, but if you if you see this, um, the, this is a, um, the catch to open the hood. And right next to it is the data. Now, <clears throat> you plug it in by doing that. If you just feel in there, that's it, it just plugs in. And if you can see, um, let me just turn this light off here. If you see, you'll see the blue hanging down. So that means it's there. So um, that's all you do, <laughs> it's just there. Okay, so now we're going to download the app. So, um, just give me a second. Okay, so now we're going to download the app. So we go to, oh, I'm doing it on an iPhone. Um, the Android's exactly the same. You download the app. The app's called uh, Car Scanner, uh, ELM. Uh, it's probably the most popular one out of all of them. It's free. I've, I've got the pro version, but uh, that's because because I'm a software developer, I kind of want to support other software developers. It's only nine dollars for a lifetime, so it's worthwhile. So here we go. We go to um, that's already there. Okay, fancy that. So um, I typed in uh, uh, car scanner E L M O B um, two, and um, and and I've already got it, so I'll just open it. So you'll download it um, and you'll put your username password in and yeah, normal stuff that you do when you download an app. I'm sure you know how to do that. And uh, so we'll open it and this is what you see. You'll see down the bottom it's got um, ELM um, connection disconnected and uh, ECU co um, connection disconnected. So there's two. There's one where this is, there's two connections. There's one where this is connected to the little device, this device. And there's one where the device is talking to the engine itself. They both have to have to be talking. So um, all, all we do is we um, we press the uh, uh, connect and we go out there. Uh, so what we do is we go out there, we turn the car on. Actually, you don't need to turn the car on, but um, but we will. Um, and you press connect, and it will connect. Um, so what I mean by that is, we even with the car turned off, you can still manage, you can still do this. You can still look at all the information um, uh, with it turned off. So we'll go out there now and we'll um, we'll connect and we'll have a look. Okay, so now with the, with the app open, so we open the app. Uh, car scanner, and we connect. And you'll see there that it's connecting. Actually, you'll see in here as well. So now, <clears throat> Let's look at the data. So we've got um, on the top left hand side, we've got a dashboard, we've got live data, all the sensors, and you go all the way through. The simplest thing to use, the simplest thing to start with, is to go to all sensors. So now that tells you the sort of information that you can have um, all the way through. So <clears throat> just a while to get it all. Um, so uh, we've got vehicle speed, GPS speed, current time, altitude, um, average speed, and all that sort of stuff. Um, but then you've got um, 
So the next thing you got here, you, you'll see EVs, um, uh, energy consumption. So you know on the, on the dashboard when it um, when uh, yeah, you put the fill the brake and, and and you see the uh, the um, uh, kilo uh, the um, energy use go into negative, and when you push the accelerator down, it goes up. That's what that, that is there. That's in real time. Um, the battery power, vehicle acceleration in Gs. Um, so then we get to the interesting things. I'm not sure what battery pack factory SOC is, but it's always 65%. And uh, so we've got the nominal um, state of charge at 12%. That's because I've just done a trip, and um, I went for 300 kilometres to see to see how the battery um, changes because I, I need to find all this out. So you've got the battery total voltage. You've got um, you've got the uh, maximum allowed charge power. You've got um, cha uh, charge times. Where you get to the interesting things is you'll see here the lowest voltage for cell number 11 to so it's chain is 3.2 volts. Um, for cell number, uh, it doesn't say this. Oh, and also for um, it's got um, the highest voltage is 93, uh, uh, is cell number uh, 94, and that's cell uh, 3.21. So it's actually got them for every one of those cells. Um, you've got the, you've got the temperature, what the temperature is in there. Um, so there's a whole heap of data. You go crazy. You go crazy with all the data, but I'll just go back to the screen. So you, you can set it up with with um, live data, so you can actually have um, uh, monitoring, so you have it combined, and you can pick which ones you want. Um, you've got uh, so you, there's a whole lot of other stuff as well. It's 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 really. Um, if you want to have a play with it, just go to the normal sensors so you can see what's available and you can set up what you want. Sorry about the noise in the background, can't get good help. So we'll call that, we'll stop that. So if you're still listening, uh, you're still watching, uh, I've got a little bit of extra bit of information for you. Um, a better route planner um, will be uh, obtaining live data from um, the ATO3. Um, through the um, OBD2 port um, in the near future. Um, they're currently uh, rolling it out across a number of, of vehicles. Um, I believe it's already in the Hyundai, the Nissan Leaf, the, um, and, a, and a few of the others. So um, that's going to be interesting because we'll get live update of the battery conditions as we're driving along and the range will be dynamic. I know the manual says that the range is dynamic, but we all know it's not. Um, <clears throat> so um, you may be interested in just looking at the data and playing with it, um, but it is going to be of, of use. Um, the other thing that you should be aware of too is um, don't leave the uh, device plugged in. Um, it does use battery power. Now, I'm not sure whether the uh, system you know, regenerates the power or exactly what it does, but I wouldn't take the chance. You, you, know, you don't want to end up with a flat battery. And um, the device I used was the um, VEEE Peak, VIP Peak, um, which everybody seems to, you know, it's probably the, I mean, everybody uses it, so I imagine it's the best. Um, so uh, that's all, folks. <laughs>